Well, 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 let's begin my trading mates. So it seems like you're having a hard time keeping your cool when it comes to holding on to your trades. You know you're supposed to be riding the wave, but as soon as you jump in that trade, you start to shake like a leaf. Your emotions start to run wild and the adrenaline rush is so intense that you feel like you just downed a Red Bull smoothie. <laughs> Somewhere in your trade, you get to that point where you're like, screw it. I'm out of here. I'll take whatever I can today and I'm out of this trade. And you hit that sell button faster than a jackrabbit on a hot plate. Boom, you're out of the trade. But from here, the trade continues to move in your favor, making higher highs, crossing 100 points, then 200 and even further up. And then, of course, you feel like kicking yourself in the rear because, you know, you should have stayed in the game. But instead, you start to feel blue and the cycle of regret and self-loathing starts. Maybe you tried fixing it. Maybe you watched a lot of YouTube videos uh, more than a cat video addict. But nothing seems to work, right? Like, trust me, I feel your pain because this was my biggest problem. I, I faced this for two years and it was a real downer. It was depressing. I knew I, I had the edge, but why wasn't I able to play it out? I kept a diary and kept asking myself for some answer to come to me consciously, subconsciously, anyhow, but I needed some answer. I scoured the internet, but all I found was a bunch of vague advice that left me feeling more confused than a toddler in a room full of buttons. So I had to roll up my sleeves and develop my own system to fix this problem. So in this journey of mine, I searched a lot of books and also I met a few mentors who taught me the right way to hold the trade. And I've combined all the knowledge from these different various mentors into this one course so I can help you guys do the same. So let's dive into the nitty gritty of how to solve this problem once and for all. And to do this, we first have to understand the thought, go deeper into our psyche and reason with it. What is the reason that is stopping us from holding a trade and how do we fix this? So when you're unable to hold your trade, let's look at what's really going on. So you enter a trade and then what is happening between the point you enter and between the time that you close early. So let's look at the first one, uh, risk. Well, as soon as you enter the trade, the most important thing to establish here is that we have risk on the table. Okay, you have risked something. You now have something to lose and we are programmed over time to respond to what we are going to lose. This is what we look at. All these thoughts start rushing in. Oh no, we're going to lose money. We're going to be broke. We are going to have to live off ramen noodles for the rest of our lives. I'm going to lose all my salary. I'm going to go backwards. For the longest time, I was equating the loss with a salary. I earned from my job. Uh, I was calculating the loss in my head and thought if, a big if, if I lost, I'd be burning the whole days of hard work in split seconds. I'll be going backwards in life. I felt like a downgrade, like I'll always be a hamster running in circles on a wheel. But these are just, all, all these thoughts are just untrue thoughts. They're just made by us and made by our mind. I calculated in a way that I'd lose every day because I'm hyper pessimistic and I'm, I'm just negative when it comes to trading. So, but really, can you lose every trade? I mean, that thought never occurred to me, right? Because this is my mindset. So I had to tune it accordingly. And trust me, you must be having your own set of thoughts, which you have to start understanding as to why they're hampering your, the, the holding of your trade. And trust me, even the biggest loser will have some wins. So it's not possible to lose every trade, right? But these were the thoughts which were coming to me. These thoughts are something to look at. I want you guys to ponder over the thoughts which you get, which are keeping you away from holding the trade. That is the first and foremost thing I want you to, uh, guys to do. You know, why are we having these self-defeatist thoughts? So these thoughts, do these thoughts have a right logic? I'm sure you must be having your own. With these thoughts, we feel like we're becoming less valuable in the society and, and just in general. And so what happens is our defense mechanism will start to kick in. You'll again begin to get rushes of adrenaline and especially if you're new to trading or at least fairly new. And it's going to be very, very difficult to control if you don't have the right kind of bearings as to how to deal with it essentially. And so that is the first part of the equation. Understand the risk and actually truly look and ponder and deeply think about it. Now, somewhere when we're in the trade, we also have a belief, a belief about money. So why do most people get into trading? Why did you get into trading? For me, it was two big words, financial freedom. 
there were these other things as well like i would have no boss so i have no one to breathe fire on me all the time when i miss a deadline i would have enough time for my friends and family after market hours um i would have the freedom of location there are so many reasons but these are mine but the most important for me was financial freedom and i i'm betting that for you guys as well is the same and as a result of that we start to visualize the outcome of every tick all the dreams about what trading could do for our life and we put all those dreams and the faith in each an individual trade and so with every tick movement on the price chart you're either feeling really excited as it's going up or you're getting kind of annoyed and depressed and frustrated when it starts to go down i always felt like i was getting dragged two steps backwards from the life which i want to live and again what happens is that that you just end up going back to the point where your defense mechanism kicks in you don't want to lose anything be downgraded be a loser avoid the shame and you end up exiting the trade so yeah you you're more inclined towards the risk of worse than goal oriented remember that there was a study done that trading in in trading the loss of 100 dollars is more heavier on the psyche and outweighs uh, the gain of 200 dollars so keep that in mind it's always heavier on the heart when you lose a little bit of money than if you're gaining even twice the size of that because losses are always they make you feel downgraded they make you feel like a loser so keep that thought in mind and when you're thinking the risk of worse that is when the body tenses up the stress creeps in and you forget the long term and opt for whatever short term gain you provided so keep this like rem- always remember this the belief So in this first lesson we are just trying to focus on the different thought patterns because that's the most important thing when it comes to holding a trade. So we've broken down now like we have a risk so we should be really aware of what the risk is and how we perceive it and then comes the belief what the beliefs are and how we should not put our different beliefs uh into our trades and not because we have to be emotionally detached at the end of the day. So if we have these strong beliefs they're always going to come in the way for us to hold the trades so remember these things then the third is time now the third one the third one is time why time because time the amount of time you're sitting staring at each individual price movement is a time you're allowing your emotions to build up and therefore influence your decision i've been there too and i know how tempting it can be to constantly check your trades and see the gains and losses the m2m moving up and down the profit and loss numbers moving up and down but the truth is the more time you spend in front of those charts the more likely you're going to make mistakes not holding your trades is a mistake in itself and the more you let your emotions get the best out of you the harder it'll be for you to stick to your plan so here's my tough love advice you need to reduce your chart time I know it's not easy but it's the best way to keep your emotions in check and avoid making costly mistakes. We will discuss this point in more detail in the coming class where I will provide you a hack to tackle this. It's important to be aware of how emotions can come into play when watching charts and trading. Fear of missing out can be a big big factor and it's important to keep your emotions in check to avoid making mistakes especially if you're new to trading. It's a good idea to start with a smaller time period and practice with demo accounts to build up your skills. Another key factor is having a system in place to track your progress. This is really important. See, a system doesn't give you the solutions, but rather allows you to experiment and see what works best for you. When it comes to holding trades, tracking relevant metrics is essential. For example, instead of just tracking your percentage gains or losses, you should focus on metrics that specially measure how often you're holding trades, such as the percentages of trade held over a week or month. This will give you a better idea of your progress and help you make better decisions in the future. Also, remember writing creates metacognition. Now, for those of you who do not know what metacognition is, is to think about one's own thinking or cognitive processes. It involves being aware of and understanding one's own thoughts, feelings and behaviors as well as the ability to monitor and control one's own cognitive processes. The more you reflect on your own thought process, the better you will be equipped to make adjustments or changes needed. It is a very important skill when it comes to critical thinking and is essential for learning, problem solving and decision making. 
Also for your reference, I'm going to share my Excel sheet when I was tracking my metrics. So you get an idea of how metrics are to be tracked. So how I did this, uh, let me tell you a story. So I read this book called Think and Trade Like a Champion, this book by Mark Minervini. I think everyone should read it. And in that, there was a very good example of how uh, one of his students started replicating him, but he would copy everything. If that guy would shave, he would shave. If that guy would go to gym, he would gym. And one day the mentor got annoyed and asked his student that, why are you doing these things? So the student replied that I want to become exactly like you. So I will try to replicate exactly all the things which you do in order for me to understand how you trade. But he just took it up like many notches. What I did when I was trading with my mentor is I maintained an Excel sheet. So wherever he would hold his trades, I would, uh, and whenever I was exiting early, I would go back later in the day and check out what my mistakes were. And this is where I understood that my mistakes, there was no mistake. It was just fear. While my mentor would just wait patiently for his target to be achieved at the right supply or demand level. If he's shorting the market, he would wait for the right demand. If he's longing the market, he would wait for the right supply. And if it did not reach those levels, he would have his trailing stop losses in place. But me, because of the fear, I would always assume that at some point in the trade that the market was going to turn against me and I would exit the trade. So I started tracking these metrics down. And after first month, I started working on them. So I'm going to provide you my Excel sheet as well. So you guys can see what all I was tracking, you know, because on the first month, they were just like holding errors. <laughs> Everything is marked in yellow. <laughs> and that's just me not being able to hold my trades. And this is why I exactly designed the course, because I want to help you. I'm, I'm pretty sure there are many people who need this kind of help as well for them to learn how to hold it, because this was my biggest issue. And I even tracked my sleeping patterns if I was tired in, in on a trading session, if I hadn't slept right, you know, all these little things I tracked so it could help me trade better. So in summary, it's important to start with a small time frame and work your way up gradually when trying to hold your trades for a specific amount of time. Keep your emotions in check and start with demo accounts if you're new to trading. Implement a system to track relevant metrics and focus on progress and the process not just the percentage gains or losses. See, because when you start, it's very important for you guys to drill down into these thoughts because when you start to practice, your practice has to be right. As you must have heard, you know, it's, I would say that practice uh, does not make you perfect. Practice makes it permanent. So please practice right. And with the right practice and dedication, you'll be able to improve your trading skills and hold your trades for longer periods of time. Now let's come to the fourth point, gambling. So this, that's the big G, gambling. <laughs> Most traders tend to gamble. And that's the reason why I left this topic for the last. When you close early, you're destroying your edge. Remember that when you are closing early, you're destroying your edge. Your edge is what gives you the probability of winning over the long run. When you destroy your edge, what you're doing is gambling. If you don't pay attention to these things and you think that you don't need to track them, you will end up in the same situation as I did. I had to work for years with no result, which was not a pleasant experience. So I don't want you guys to take so much time as I did. And I want you guys to have a faster learning curve and move faster. Therefore, it's crucial for you guys to make the decision about which path you want to take. Learning all of this stuff would be pointless if you're going to end up gambling anyway. Hence, it is important for you guys to track your progress, reduce chart time and monitor your beliefs and expectations about money. Once you solve these things, you'll begin to view trading differently and you'll be able to organize and schedule your trades better. Instead of focusing on whether you're up or down for the day or week, you need to look at your performance over a period of time, analyze it and interpret the data. You should also experiment with solutions to the problem that you experience. If you can consistently do these things over time, you are guaranteed to improve. I highly, highly recommend that you look into all of this and implement it into your routine.